Good evening, this is Late Night Movies with Mike and Forbes. We're here tonight to talk about Bad Boys Ride or Die. There's going to be some mild spoilers, so if you haven't seen the film yet, you might want to tune back in once you've seen it. Definitely, definitely. We've uh, went to see this tonight. View Cinema. Indeed. Always our place to go. Oh, the comfy, beautiful chairs. Recliner. Recliner, yes. Little treats for uh, Forbes' birthday. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, uh, mid-30s, we'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> You're different. So yeah, Ride or Die. The name, uh, I, I wasn't sure about the name, in all honesty. Ride or Die, it, it kind of feels a little bit Fast and the Furious. And it's funny you should say that, because I was looking at an IGN review of this movie mm-hmm. uh, before we went to go see it, and they actually quoted Fast Five um, <laughs> right. as the, the franchise pivot point. Mm-hmm. And they reference Bad Boys as being the same. Mm-hmm. That it's the pivot point of the franchise where you introduce more and more characters to the movies yes. with a view of taking the franchise a little bit further. Yeah, yeah. IGN reviewed it well. Uh, but what do Mike and Forbes feel about this film? So I... let's go through the story a little bit. Okay, let's go through the story. Right. I'm going to I'm going to digest with the other movies. Okay. So we've always been Bad Boys fan. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Ever since the late 90s for the first one. Yeah. Actually, 1995, I want to say. Mid-90s, yeah, 95. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the first one, all the way up to now. So the first one was, as you can imagine, just a perfect action movie. Great came, action movie, yeah. Yeah. Spinning off to uh, sequels with a nice amount of space in between them all. A lot of space between yeah, them. A lot of yeah. space, but a good amount as yeah. well. You don't want to be... Like Fast and Furious, don't be chucked out constantly. Well, that's a curious thing, thing, isn't it? This is the smallest amount of space between a Bad Boy sequel it is. that we've had. The first one, 95. Mm-hmm. For Stats fans, your second one was, I think, 2003. Three, that's right. Um, your third one was 2020. Yes. Early part before lockdown. Just before lockdown. Um, and then fourth one, 2024. So that's we've right. had a four-year gap between this one. Yeah, yeah. The first one, we had an uh, eight-year gap. Um, quick math, I think eight. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we, it's a short amount of time. It is, yeah, and you know, it's it's been like a, a really long four years because we've expected this movie throughout the whole time. Yeah, right. So first one, pretty much perfect. Now, when it comes to two and three, I found that they didn't really they didn't really nail down the purpose of Martin Lawrence's character. Interesting. His his comedy is is always different, grounded. Yeah, yeah. like. Second one, an angry, angry little man sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, third one, um, you know, wanted the retirement, but he's like almost like a lethal weapon type scenario. The, the yeah, Danny Glover type character, exactly. Like, yeah, the one grounded by the family, whereas Mel Gibson's character would be more like Mike Larry. Yeah, um, he's footloose and fancy free still. That's right. But not so much this one. But very loving towards uh, Mike Lowry, so Will Smith. But in the second one, he wasn't. He was really rejected against him. Like, he didn't want him as a friend. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, they can't really pinpoint what is comedy and the way his character should be. Now, you got, obviously, this one. Mm. And I felt the same thing at the beginning. I was like, okay, I'm not really understanding. You know, we got the wedding... His speech, it wasn't really a speech. You think somebody has been friends all of this time, the speech would be a little better. It was a little you bit... Think, yeah, it was like very paper thin, fast. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Then, he become the star of the whole movie. He was f- very, very funny. Through the heart attack, wasn't it? So he has the heart After attack at the wedding reception. As soon as that happens, and it's then, like they cut the shit. Yeah. And he, he kind of... He kind of mentioned that when he was going through his tra- yeah. trauma of, of dying. All the bullshit yeah, gone. Yeah, the bullshit is yeah. gone. And then I was really warming to to um, Martin Lawrence. You know, he's now action. He's funny. He was funnier than he's, Will Smith. He's, yeah. the, he's, the, he's now the star of his film. And you know, with the whole masculinity of Will Smith throughout the whole three oh, cool. films, yes. you know, yeah. You, know, you, you, it's it's sort of like you know, we've got to make him the big action hero, yeah. The smooth guy, he kills everybody, he drives fast cars, he's got the money, and Martin Lawrence is the sort of you know the black sheep. He's well, he's the punching bag, yeah. You know, yeah. But this time, about the jokes, he wasn't. He wasn't. 
He wasn't this time around. Yeah. I kind of feel with um, Mike Lowry, you know, with Will Smith's character, that he was, as a adolescent boy, was everything you wanted to be. The Porsche driving, mm-hmm. smart talking. Love that Porsche. Um, yeah, and he always has a Porsche throughout the franchise, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, second one, he had the Ferrari. Uh, um, third one, he had... He had a Porsche now. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, and then a newer Porsche in this one. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. sponsored by the Volkswagen Audi group. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, I think the with Mike Lowry, when you're a, a young, impressionable child, you you want to be him. You want to be that guy. He's smooth. He's everything Will Smith was in the nineties. Um, but then, as you get an older guy, and now they know the audience is now fine tuned to your thirty somethings, your forty somethings that are going to go see, see this film based on the nostalgia of the original from the nineties. Yeah, yeah. And um, you now more sympathetic to him. To Martin Lawrence's character, where yeah, yeah. He, he's a family man, devoted family man, devoted family man, devoted yeah. family man. But then they flip Martin's his head to now make Will Smith the devoted family man. Yes. He's in a similar situation. He's married. He's got a kid. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and he's starting to not be so courageous about his life because yeah. he's got people to love, and that's the mechanic, isn't he? You've got yeah, the panic yeah. attacks that keep occurring for for for, for Will Smith's character, yeah, where. Yeah. It keeps stunting him in the action. Yeah. It keeps stopping him, mm-hmm. going all guns blazing like you'd yeah. expect from Will Smith in mm-hmm. these action films. But in actual fact, it turns on its head that Martin Lawrence now, from the aftermath of the heart attack, yeah. has a new found sense of bravado, feeling that he is he can take on the world. Yes, um, and he is now the leader of like the action sequences in this film. Certainly is. I don't think it's much appreciated. I think. It, it really is. I'll, I'll tell you what this film is. So this fourth one is a huge, um, a huge dedication to the first one. I'm not going to give away too many Easter eggs because it was packed full of Easter eggs. It was. If you notice it, you really notice it. Um, but I will mention one in particular was the points. If you remember from the first one, Martin Lawrence is down on the fours. Yeah. And a car is coming at him. Yeah. And he's uh, about to get hit. And then Will Smith courageously run in, yeah. grabs him, chucks him out of the way. And that flips on his head in this one. Yeah. It does. Will Smith's the one. Yeah. He's having a panic attack. He's looking at the vehicle that's coming yeah. for him. And Martin Lawrence zooms in, despite his way, fast, grabs him, throws him out of the way. And I, I love that. I love it when they come back to the history of the other films. Exactly. I love it when they bring it back. Yeah. Um, you know, when they forget about it, it's, it's too disconnected when it comes to a sequel. And that's what doesn't make a sequel. So this one, it does Yeah, it make keeps it. the continuity there, doesn't it? Yes. It changes it things does. a little bit, mm-hmm. but also keeps things from where we remember it. Yeah. So the general premise of this one is the captain, uh, posthumously, is mm-hmm. being framed for a corruption... Um, but the um, you know the baddies in this film uh, inadvertently send out a uh, messaging system to um, Mike and Marcus, mm-hmm. and um, that sends them on the trail of trying to clear his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a fantastic story. Oh God, that? yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I didn't expect that. That we get to a point where our, the main characters, our our main heroes in the yeah, film, yeah. are the ones that are wanted. Um, you know, we have um, Mike's son back in it. Yep. Um, you know, flipping that on his head to make him more the anti-hero of this film. That's right. Um, we have um, supporting cast with um, Vanessa Hutchins as the, the sort of the love interest uh, for the guy that was in the last Bad Boys film. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you've got, you know, forgetting names here, just we're not amateur sort of. Film goes, they were not sort of like you know, jealous, yeah. Uh, Mr. Fantastic, of course, as we as we know, <laughs> yeah. Aaron Grufford, yeah, that's it, yes, yeah. thank you, thank yeah. you so much, yeah, yeah, who plays a bigger part sort of later on in this film. Um, and you know, it's a great film of who to trust and who you don't trust in this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the main bad guys are quite menacing enough in the fact that they are you know, professionals, mm-hmm. um. And there's a lot of times in this film where there's brilliant action sequences. Amazing. Great action Absolutely sequences. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'll, t- I'll tell you what I, I really loved, and it kind of took 
the glory away from Will Smith and Martin Lawrence is by bringing another character up to the action skills, which we did not expect. Yeah. Is, is it Reggie, you want to say? Well, it's son. The, um... More nonsense. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Son in law. Son in law. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was very surprised. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah. So, you know, we know him in the, in the second one. Great scene when he turned up for the dates. Yeah. And, you know, the, uh, Will Smith was playing, like, just come out of prison. He was a gangster sort yeah. of thing. It was, it was an amazing scene. It's, it's, it's what all fathers really, really want. Yeah. <laughs> to kind of reenact with their daughters. Mm. Um, in the third one, you know, uh, they had a kid, he joined the Marines, um, but you, you don't think too much into it. No. You know, you think, okay, he's just, he's just a genuine guy looking after his family. And obviously in this one now, he's actually more started, established. Yeah. yeah. Killed 15 people. Yeah. Really, really skilled, more skilled than them too, yes. because they're just cops. He's actually a Marine. Which makes her a brilliant scene at the end of the film. Yes. Which it really yeah. did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah. But one thing that's a great thing to sort of tap into was the humanity of the characters mm-hmm. that they we it could have been too easy to make a Hollywood action uh, film much like Die Hard Five, mm-hmm. where the soul is sucked out of it and it's just phoning in performances yeah. based on a very loose story. Yeah, but yeah. everything was very tight in this film. The story was great. The action was great. The characters that you love are still those characters that you love. Yeah. Um, despite the age. Gap between ninety five to two thousand twenty four. That's, that's right. You know they they brought the characters back from the third one, and they didn't kind of overcompensate the film either. They were like in exactly. and out sort of thing, and exactly. you you don't think okay now it's a, a franchise with lots of main characters. Yeah. It's it like no, they were briefly in it, and, and they dipped in for the help. They needed their exactly. help. You know, yeah, for the end yeah. game, the end, the end part of the film. Yeah, you know we we build up our characters as the film goes on, and that's a good natural progression of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that this film did everything in the right way mm-hmm. um, to build up to where we get to the final scenario, the end game, um, and the redemption of whatever characters yeah. are leading their own path to, um, you know, get to their own, um, you know, the, their own ends Mm -hmm. you know where they want to be where they need to be Mm -hmm. um and i think the film was just absolutely fantastic the pacing was great it didn't feel like a long film no it didn't it didn't um you know unlike the second one where it just kind of went on and on and on Mm. um no this one was very very well balanced um I'll, i'll tell you something actually when i watched the trailer before we watched this film i had kind of like a story of what would happen i knew they were on the run i knew the um, authorities was against um, our uh, beloved Martin uh, Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. Marcus Burnett. And I was also thinking like things like you know they take away the trust fund of Mike Lowry, so he's like kind of yeah that would have worked, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. they took everything away, like you know freeze all his accounts that sort of thing. So he's got no money whatsoever, which it kind of dipped into, but not enough for me to kind of so fulfill my fantasy on a scale of one to enemy of the state. Um, you know we're yes. we're down one end of the scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, quite, yeah. Yeah. And now they bring up any mistake. Would have been easy to go that way, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah it would have been easy to just remake that into a bad boys film. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we, we are where we are. <laughs> but it's even better for that. And I, to touch on Will Smith, I think, for a second, it's great to see Will Smith post Oscar mm-hmm. slap yeah. in a redemption role. Definitely. That this is what this man is born to play. These great comedic action roles. Yes. He is a great actor. And I will not have anyone say anything against Will Smith. Fantastic actor. For somebody that they even go into this business as an actor, mm. what an actor he is. He's become. a great actor. Really, really is. And I always like to think about his career as, as acting. And I always think about certain movies. The best movies he's ever done. But I always see him as his grumpy years. Yeah. You know? And you look at all the characters, they're always moody, grumpy, miserable. After our yeah. Uh, even before that, you know, you've got Hancock. your <laughs> Hancock, I Am Legend, mm. uh, whatever pound, seven pounds. A seven pounds, yeah. You know, it's, it's all dreary, he's miserable, every single one. And you, you kind of think, you know, I grew up on Will Smith of being like this kind of like happy-go-lucky 
action so hero. So you are Bad Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black, Will Smith. Exactly. That's where that's your Will Smith is. That's yeah. that's how I you know, founded uh, that after. Um, so if we're going to bring that back, it's great. In the third and fourth one, it's brilliant to see, isn't it? And he's, he's back. It's a great. role he's born to play. Mm-hmm. Martin Lawrence is a funny man. Yeah. Um, you know he's been in some great films. Yeah. Um, you know Big Mama's House, Blue Streak. Um, you yeah. know, uh, Black Knight. He's been in some. He's been in some great comedy roles in his yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he is actually in this film quite the driving comedic force. Definitely, yeah. He's um, he's brought back that character that we beloved in the first and second one. I would not definitely say the third one. Okay, because that's more Will Smith. The third one. Yeah. It's all about him and yeah. and some kind of bullshit background that they created for him, yeah. which didn't really fit the criteria. But I'll let it go. Um, so it's good to see Martin Lawrence come back and and be at the same level as Will Smith, I would say. Well, what's clever about this film, I think, is that the I think you could probably put the sequels in brackets together. So one mm-hmm. and two are together in brackets. Yeah. Three and four are in brackets together. Yes. And I think that the the third one exists mm-hmm. really to set up for the fourth one. Yeah. You know, it's very clear now that all the story that they did in the third one is now echoed and it pays off in the fourth one. Definitely. So what would you say, you know, as a complete movie, where would you rank the fourth one in the franchise of Bad Boys films? Really, really difficult because, you know, the the first one's a classic. The first one's an absolute classic. The second one is probably one of the best action films to to ever been made. Interesting, okay. Um... So it's really difficult to work out where the fourth one fits in with them two. Mm. What would you give it out a, out a sort of out of ten rating? Oh, ten, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. I really was. Ten out of ten action film. Yeah, great movie. Yeah, well worth what the six and a half quid to go to the cinema. Definitely, you need to go to the cinema to see it. Great right on the big it. screen. Lots of action. Lots of explosions. Lots of everything you expect. Yeah, I think if I was going to sort of rank them in order of the films, it'd be one. Uh, four, three, two. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You put the second one last. Yeah, I think it's very forgettable. Yeah. That's a movie. It's it's only because it dried on so long. Yeah. You know, I remember when we went to, see, to cinema to see it. Yeah. I I was ready to put my coat on because I thought it was the ending, yeah. and then carried on. I was like, oh, I'll sit that down. I mean, that's worth mentioning that. Being, I did that a couple of times. So. Yeah, being in our late thirties, that yeah. we we didn't have the chance to see the first one at the cinema, but we no. saw two onwards at the yes. cinema. So two, three, and four we saw in the cinema. So yes, we've grown up with Bad Boys post mm-hmm. sort of nineties. Yeah, um, first one from Blockbusters. Yeah, Remember VHS cassette. Oh yeah, it was yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we never saw Tia Leone again, did we? <laughs> she never came back. That's strange, isn't films. it? Yeah. That would have been a great comeback for her in this one. Yeah. Would have been. Maybe in the next one. Yeah. Who knows? Same, same. Who knows? So Hollywood, if you're listening, so if anyone's listening, just you know, <laughs> give her a job. Give her a call. Um, so yeah, it gets what our recommendation. We think that's a great film. Really, really good. Um, I, I would definitely say it's better than the third one. And you're giving it a 10 out of 10. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Okay, I'm going to give it a uh, 9.5 out of 10. Okay. Um, and the reason why I didn't get a 10 is because my seat could have reclined a little bit more. Right, so uh, the view owners just recognise that, that we did expect our feet to go up a little higher <laughs> than... That's just old age now, isn't it? We just really want our yeah, feet up. Just, yeah, <laughs> you know, have a kip in the cinema. But um, shout out to Will, who came with us as well. Oh, um, definitely. Yeah, it's Mike and Falls at the movies doing this, but yeah, we had our friend Will O'Hara with us as well, um, and he equally enjoyed it. And one thing that we always recognise that when we do enjoy a film is that when we get out of the cinema... We don't instantaneously talk about it. We'll wait till we get in the car and talk about it. We do. If we get out and we have a cigarette and we talk about it, we know a film is yeah, yeah. condemned. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes um, on the way to the car, isn't it? It's like, yeah. so what do we think of this? Yeah. And I always love that. Yeah. It was like, yeah, you know what? Now that I've got a bit of fresh air, yeah, really good. Yeah. I think this is definitely one, if you're going to cinema to go and view it, you're always thinking about it, just go and do it. Um, if you're going to pick up on video on demand or DVD or Blu-ray or 4K, whatever, you know, the new kids are doing these days, recommend it. Just support the movie industry and this particular popcorn flip. That's it. Yeah, and you're quite right as well. We do need to support this because 
you know, the more we put our money towards it, the more movies they will make. Um, we don't want to be against it because we don't want the less and less movies happening, um, which is, is inevitable. It's, it's going to happen. Um, but we want more movies to be made so we, we want to watch them. Yeah. So it gets our recommendation. And, um, yeah, I suppose you'll catch us for the next film that we're going to go see. Well, we know what it's going to be, don't we? We do. But you'll find out soon. See you next time. Tara loves.